Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Tattoo Critiques. I'm your host, Pony Lawson. We've got a fresh new batch of artist submissions, so shall we? Okay, first up, we've got Katie Leatham. And Katie sent in this micro portrait of Tupac. Let's have a look. So the first thing I noticed, I have the reference pulled up uh, next to your tattoo so I can kind of compare and contrast some things. And I noticed that you decided to put in a little bit of background shading where there is no background shading on the reference. And I think that ultimately hindered this tattoo because you didn't really need it. You had shading on the side of Tupac's face and shading on his shirt. You didn't really need to add that dark background behind him. It would have been nice if you would have kept that shadow behind his head where that headband has a shadow coming down and a little bit of his hand on his shirt and things like that. But you didn't need all that extra uh, round shaped shadow behind him. Another thing I noticed is the dark shadow that's coming off of his hand. I feel like you could use a lot more solid blacks where that shadow lays, whereas you left it kind of open with a little bit more skin tone or a little bit more white highlights kind of exposed where it doesn't really need that because there's not really a highlight hitting that. You know, that's the dark side of the hand. Uh, it should be just as dark. I wish you would have tapered the shirt off to the left a little bit more as well. It kind of just looks like the reference just ended there. Uh, but when I pulled up the reference, I noticed that he had a lot more shirt left on either side. So you really could have tapered that off or softened that up on either edge. You're also bringing too much attention to the bottom right of this tattoo where those wrinkles are. I think those are unnecessary. You didn't really need to add those in. Maybe just some very soft shading to elude that there is a shirt, but you didn't really need to include those heavy wrinkles. His left eye seems to have gotten uh, a bit more dark than the reference. It seems to be a lot more black going on. Uh, on the tattoo side of things. Uh, whereas if we look at the reference, there's just not near as much black. It kind of seemed like the ear got away from you a little bit as well. Uh, it seems a little small on the tattoo side, whereas on the reference, it seems like the ear kind of goes up and then back down. Whereas on the tattoo, it just seems like the top of the ear just kind of comes straight down. It seemed like it went a little heavy on the eyebrows as well. When I look at the reference, it seems like the eyebrows are a little bit thinner toward the inside and you kind of just made them a little darker, maybe a little bit thicker and a little more squared off than they actually are. To reiterate, I think my main gripe is just the circular shadow that you have in the background. You know, I think you would have been better off if you would have just had the shadow from the headband. Also, I think the shadows in his left eye were a bit heavy and also the shirt. I wish that would have just taper off a little bit. Have you have done those? things, I really think you would have sent this tattoo home. So thank you, Katie. I appreciate you sending that in. The next couple tattoos were sent in by Manny Barajas, aka Sweets. So Manny, the first tattoo you sent in is this all red rose with a name as a stem. Right away, I can tell this is a very well executed tattoo. All the line work that you have in this entire thing is super clean. And I like how you have the stippling effect running through this tattoo as well. As far as the name goes, the stem, I think this line weight that you chose was just the right choice. Uh, it's not too thin and it looks nice and thick, you know, uh, thick enough to be stem for that rose. And you happen to put all the white highlights right where they need to be. You know, they don't look out of place and they don't look overdone. So excellent job there. Let's pivot over to this next tattoo that you sent in. This next one is a portrait of Mac Miller, RIP. There are a few things that I wanna break down about this portrait. The first thing I noticed right away is his beard. And I feel like the beard is kind of a bit thicker on the tattoo than it is in the reference. The reference there is a lot more uh, skin tones coming through the hair, uh, as you can see. And I think you kind of just blackened in or shaded in too much of that, making it look a lot thicker. Another thing I noticed right away is the shadow that's coming off of the glasses onto his cheek. It seems like you made that a little bit harsher than it should have been, or you could have made that a little bit softer, you know, from the line of the shadow up into his cheek. I also don't think this tattoo necessarily needs any background shading. I think you can lighten that up a lot. I know it's nice to have shade on the light sides of faces, but he doesn't really have a very light side of the face and the back side is all that black hair and dark side of the neck as well. The times when you need heavier shadows in the background are when you need to illuminate the spots that are being highlighted. So for example, if there's like a big highlight on the forehead or the side of the cheek or something like that to where there isn't a dark line, like a beard line or something like that, you can throw a shadow in there or some sort of shading to give that some distinction. On the back side of his head though, you have this dark hair and this dark neckline and things like that. So you don't really need to do any dark shadows. You could use a little bit of uh, light shadows, maybe a one or two drops, something along those lines, but I really think it's unnecessary to use all those dark shades. If we go to the top of the tattoo, it kind of seems like you had the same issue with the hair as you did with the beard. And that's just introducing textures and leaving some skin tone shine through. It seems like you maybe kind of hurried through this, you know, you could have added more texture in the beard and more texture in the hair, but you also need that skin tone to shine through, especially when working with short hair and beards and things like that, where you can see the skin tone underneath it. You want to 
to make sure that you're seeing that skin tone to give it a layer of depth and believability. So going back to the rose, I think you've got excellent line work and excellent line weight. But when we go over to the Mac Miller tattoo, I just think some things you could work on are the smaller details, you know, things in the hair, things in the beard, and just taking your time and making sure you're getting those uh, smaller, finite details in there where they need to be. Thanks, sweets. <laughs> the next set of tattoos is sent in by Angie Wynn. Well, Angie, the first tattoo you sent in is this Care Bear, and to be honest with you, I was a bit confused with this knife. It, it looked like the handle was on the left side and the blade was sticking into his belly on the right. But after some consulting, we have found out that this is indeed a bandage on the right side of his belly that's a little bloody. And uh, I think it's maybe just a short handle or no handle on the blade. So the handle seems just a bit too short. That's what's making me think that the Band-Aid is the handle. We have a couple cool small little features here and there. You know, you got a little red X's in the eyes and things like that. I mean, I, I am a fan of the split tongue, kind of cool. Uh, the line work looks good and clean. Not too much to talk about. So let's jump on over to one of these other tattoos. You also sent in this what uh, looks like to be some sort of animation anime girl anime tattoo. I'm not exactly sure. You know how I am with my animes. But the first thing I could say is the picture is not good at all. There is a glare running right through the center of this thing and I can't really see or judge anything. So let's go to the next tattoo. So it looks like you sent in another Care Bear. It seems like this may be a reoccurring um, imagery with you or maybe it's the same client. I'm not too sure. So I see a pretty sweet Daria reference in this tattoo as well. The Six Sad World TV up top was a, uh, is a TV program that Daria Morgendorfer used to watch on the show Daria if any of y'all can remember that. Totally thought this was a mask at first, but I'm just now realizing that this is a sewn on additional head to the Care Bear. And a, of course, another Band-Aid on the belly as well. So somebody's stealing some Care Bear kidneys. Some really twisted stuff going on here. But as far as the tattoo work itself goes, I feel like you could just use, you know, some varying line weight, beef it up a little bit, you know, use some thicker lines on some of these tattoos, you know, try some things out, experiment a little bit. You never know when you're gonna surprise yourself. So thank you very much, Angie. I appreciate you sending those in. Next tattoo is sent in by Frank Nielsen. And Frank, you sent in this traditional looking shark. It's a lot of bright, vivid colors to it. I'm very curious uh, what happened to the ship in the background. I don't know if the ship is sank or if it's just over the horizon or if the shark had something to do with it. I'm just not sure but uh, the colors that you have in here are very bold and they are very well applied. Same thing with the lines. The lines are, are, are pretty clean for the most part. They could use a little bit of cleanup work, but for the most part, these are very solid and bold colors, same thing. I do think that you could use a little bit more control when it came to the shark. I feel like the shading in the shark's body is just a little haphazard uh, as opposed to all the shading in the rest of this tattoo. I also think it would have been nice to see some actual black shading in this tattoo. I see it in the water a little bit, but maybe in the rope or you know maybe even some dark brown in the rope, things like that. Just give it some variation just to give it some sort of shape and dimension. So as far as technical ability goes, I think you've got that down okay. But we're gonna talk about some design flaws. And one of them is gonna be the anchor and how it kind of disappears into the shark's mouth. Not really a huge fan of how it just disappears like that. Also not a huge fan of how the shark's tail kind of comes up, goes behind the top of the anchor, and then comes out from the top of the anchor again. It just makes it look like the shark has a very thin back tail. Not a huge fan of the V-Birds in here as well. I know they're, they're pretty simple, but uh, I honestly couldn't even tell they were there to begin with. You know, maybe if they were a little more simple or something like that, they kind of just blend in with the sun rays and the ship lines too much. Speaking of the ship lines, I also feel like you're missing a little bit of the line on the third set of uh, ship lines that you have back here. Just beyond that wave, I feel like you're missing a little bit of that post line that should be coming up. I do feel like the shades got a little sloppy in the shark, but the shades in the water and the background are all very solid. Uh, you just got a little bit messy when it came to the shark itself and a little bit of the design work. As far as the tattoo itself goes, you get the general idea of what it is when you look at it. It's not exactly clear, but for the most part, you can tell what it is. So thank you very much, Frank. So that's gonna be it for this episode. But before we go, I wanna talk about my favorite tattoo of this week, which was sent in by Manny, AKA Sweets. And Manny, you sent in this red rose uh, that is absolutely exquisite. I think everything about this tattoo is on point. The line work is stupendous and I love the stippling and the addition of the white highlights. And this just goes to show you that you don't have to have a crazy elaborate tattoo to be my favorite. It just has to be done well. And Sweets, I'm just now noticing you sent in over a couple more emails as well. And in one of these emails was this really killer mandala. So I wanna make sure to show this to everybody as well. All the lines in this tattoo are super clean. Everything is very symmetrical. And it's also in a very difficult location on the body. If I'm not mistaken, it looks to be on the center of the ditch, which is one of the harder places to tattoo. So to me, that just solidifies my choice in this week's favorite. Uh, you, again, you can tell from the lines in the red rose and also tell from the line work in this mandala that you know what you're doing. Uh, so again, everybody go check them out. 
and thanks for sending those in. So that's gonna wrap it up for this week's episode. And don't forget, you can send in your tattoos to ponycritiques at gmail.com and hopefully we'll see them on a future episode. And while you're here, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can be notified when we put up another video. And one last thing before we go, I want to give a shout out to my featured artist of the week, which is Evan Q. Now, I don't know Evan Q at all. He's just somebody who I stumbled across on Instagram uh, and it really seems like he knows what he's doing. All the tattoos that I saw are stupendous, they're rock solid, and I'm surprised he doesn't have a ton more followers than he does. So do me a favor, head on over to his page, give him a follow, let him know I sent you, and I appreciate you guys. See you next week.